Hey everyone! Welcome to All Things Iceland. We can learn about Icelandic society, history, culture, language, and nature. My name is Jules and today I'm going to focus on the nature aspect and share some truths about winter in Iceland. Mainly because there are a lot of people who want to visit during this time. It is really beautiful if there's snow on the ground, particularly in Reykjavik or any other part of the country. It can be like a winter wonderland. However, the expectations versus reality, or at least having an understanding of how much things can shift and change in winter within a short period of time, is just something I've noticed that not a lot of people are aware of. And as someone who's lived here now for so my fourth winter, I have definitely noticed <laughs> a lot of visitors being surprised by things, but I've also just in my, you know, living here, I've learned a lot about winter and I'm here to share five truths with you in order to help you if you're planning to visit or if you know someone and you want to share it with them who will be visiting Iceland in winter. So let's just jump into it. One of the first truths here is that winter can be dangerous. Now I totally get that when you come, you're maybe, if you're used to driving in wintry conditions, you might be fine. But as I mentioned, the weather in Iceland can change very quickly. And it is crucial that you're paying attention to the weather conditions and to any alerts that are out. Now recently, and this is, I'm filming this in January, so, and actually the end, very end of January, so we've just gone through a very tough winter month in which we had back-to-back -back storms, like almost starting at the beginning of the year. And it was, it was really hard, mainly because you had road closures, flight cancellations, cars getting stuck to the road so they were getting like snowed in and stuck to the road there were avalanches in the west fjord there was even an avalanche in some mountains near my house here in a suburb of Reykjavik which a person unfortunately died and there's just a lot of possibilities for danger if you're not paying attention and also if you're taking these risks mainly because you want to see the sights or you're trying to catch your flight or whatever else and you're putting that thing ahead of the possibility of you either getting into serious trouble like your car being stranded or you could die and unfortunately two Chinese tourists just this month died of exposure by the famous Solheim Asandur uh, plane wreck in South Iceland because there was a storm and I don't know if they even knew that there were these weather conditions that were too dangerous to be out there. And to be fair, I mean, this is not something that is common, but it's just something to be aware of that Iceland in winter can be dangerous. And in regards to conditions changing day to day, could be like back to back storms. And just because you have an itinerary doesn't mean that everything will go through. I mean, yeah, you have three days in Iceland, that's great. Maybe all three of those days might not work out for going on excursions because of weather conditions. So with that, always make sure you're checking safetravel.is, which is a website that gives information about alerts, road closures. They have an excellent map that they recently updated in order to kind of make sure that all the different alerts and road closures are all in the same place. So there really isn't a reason for you to not be safe uh, in terms of knowing what's going on with the weather. Just don't assume that everything's gonna be fine. Always check in advance. The second truth is even though Iceland is known as a place to see the Northern Lights, there's a good chance that you might not see them. <laughs> and, and I hate to be the one to say that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't come in for the Northern Lights. You definitely should do it because they are amazing when you do see them. But kind of piggybacking off of the first truth is that the conditions here change really quickly. And it could be really cloudy. It could be that there's a lot of light pollution from the moon 
or from if you're in the city area and you don't realize that you need to go out of the city area in order to see the northern lights it could be a snowstorm or rainstorm whatever the northern lights just don't turn on every evening because a person showed up to see them however when they do show up if there's a lot of solar flare activity uh, it's amazingly beautiful of course you are taking a chance by coming here and saying I'm here to see the northern lights without first having the expectation that it might not happen. It's a bit of uh, luck of the draw. At the same time, there have been days where the Northern Lights have been consecutively showing up in the skies in Iceland, in different areas of the country too. So it just really depends. And I do encourage people to come just, you know, like I mentioned, manage your expectations, make sure you're building in other things that you want to see and do here that are at least uh, a little bit more concrete for you to be able to enjoy, but also taking on the Icelandic kind of national phrase, if you will, even though it's unofficial, which is thetaretast. So it will all work out in the end, just because in all honesty, some things are just out of your control and the Northern Lights, as much as many people do come here and are determined to see them, it just doesn't happen for everybody every time. Number three is a, is positive, it's a good one, it's good news, and that is that it isn't as cold in Iceland as everyone assumes during the winter. And the reason for this is that the Gulf Stream actually comes up and warms most of Iceland, at least makes it temperate. <laughs> it doesn't make it like the Mediterranean or anything, but it does make Iceland less cold than say Greenland which is above it and is in the Arctic Circle and there is a small piece of Iceland in the very north that's part of the Arctic Circle but the rest of Iceland it has very mild winter temperatures uh, if you were to think of somewhere really cold like the Antarctic Alaska, Canada, so many other places that have way more colder than Iceland even though the name is Iceland, you can just expect when you come temperatures on average, at least in the south, around freezing. And of course, you can go below or above that, but on average in the wintertime, that's what it is. And then as you go north, the temperatures might get a little bit lower, but at the same time, it's just not that like ridiculous cold. And I'm from New York City, so in January and February, sometimes you get like the polar vortex. You, you know, go outside and it's so cold that it's hard to breathe. That is not typically how it is here. And so I think that is, at least managing expectation wise, is good because as long as you bring layers, you more than likely be warm enough. It won't be all the time that you'll be freezing your butt off. There could be a day where there's a fluke. I mean, I was on a glacier once where it was negative 12 outside. Thankfully there was no wind, but that was just negative 12 degrees Celsius is, is what I'm referring to. And so thankfully there was no wind, but my hands were still really cold if I took them out of my gloves. But that was an off day. That's just not a typical thing that happens. As I mentioned, it's usually around freezing, which I don't think is that bad. Number four, which goes kind of hand in hand with the fact that it all isn't always freezing, is that it is pretty common if you're walking around downtown Reykjavik or other parts of the country to encounter thick layers of ice on the sidewalks and for me like I mentioned coming from New York City this was a hard one to get used to and I know whenever my friends come they're always like how come nobody is shoveling up this <laughs> ice someone could fall and break the, a bone or whatever and it's true I mean someone and people do unfortunately fall and hurt themselves here in Iceland Icelanders included even though I think it's somewhat of a badge of honor, to some degree, for some Icelandic people to feel like they can walk on the ice without micro spikes. But I encourage people who are visiting in wintertime to have micro spikes with them or some kind of traction that you can put on the bottom of your shoes to deal with ice because it's very slippery at times. And that mainly happens because, as I mentioned, if since the weather is not always at freezing, You'll have snow that falls and then maybe it could rain, it gets a little bit warmer and everything becomes a little bit more slick and then it goes to freezing again so that it freezes over and creates like 
an ice skating rink <laughs> in some places on the sidewalks. Um, and of course on the street, they're like salting and doing things, but on the sidewalks, they're putting like sand or gravel for traction. They're not putting anything to make it go away. It's only when the temperatures start to get warmer that all of a sudden it's like, oh, there's, it's melting. You see all this like gravel or sand peaks on the sidewalks because they've just gathered over time and melted or either like stuck into the ice that is covering the sidewalks and um, near people's homes. So yeah, just an FYI, in downtown Reykjavik, like on the famous street Lorivegur, there are hot water pipes under the street. So you'll find that it's really nice to walk there because it's, because there's no ice. But as you veer off onto other streets where they don't have uh, heated sidewalks, you, just be prepared, right? For the fact that it might be very slippery and having some micro spikes can potentially save you from an embarrassing fall to, you know, potentially hurting yourself seriously, like breaking a bone. And number five, one of the truths that is more for people who are either staying in Iceland all throughout winter or for a decent period of time, and that is that the darkness is real. Okay, like it is one of those things where I don't care who you are, I feel like at some point this amount of long dark days does start to like creep into your soul a little bit. And as someone who, you know, has come from a place where I used to feel like in New York the short days was like crazy, but then I came here and I was like, oh. Okay, this is intense when you're going to work and the sun is still not up and it's nine o'clock in the morning and the shortest day of the year is from about 11 o'clock in the morning when the sun comes up to around three in the afternoon when the sun goes down. And that's a, that's a tough day. That's December 21st. The good thing is that the holidays are happening in December. So there's a lot of celebration, lots of people with Christmas lights all around. Everything's just is a lot brighter. But when you get to a month like January, which people all over already feel like is a really long month, it feels extra long in Iceland because the darkness is slowly starting to become, you know, less and less. The only problem is that it's slow. It's like snail slow because the darkness comes in like a bull in November, but then it leaves like a snail in you know January and February. And it's just really difficult at times. I've used a daylight lamp in the past. What I found though to help me is having a routine such as doing like exercise every day and just habits that are healthy, helping me to release like happy hormones. And also just to kind of keep my mind off of the darkness and not to dwell on that, have projects going on, things like that. So one that is definitely a truth is that it's dark. I mean, that's there's no way around it. But as much as it can be okay for the first couple of months, there does come a time, probably for the majority of people that are here, where the darkness is it just kind of seeps in and you're like, whoa, I'm, I, I feel like I'm really tired of this now. Uh, especially if the weather's being kind of crazy and we've had these storms, you almost feel like mentally a little bit beat up <laughs> because you're trying to adjust. And then the fascinating thing is that all of a sudden it just, one day it's bright and it's beautiful and it's bright longer and longer and you're just like, wow. Now I'm even more confused <laughs> until you adjust to that and then it's all day brightness and just another adjustment and then you go back to the darkness. So winter, that winter shift is a truth at least about that is that it's very, very hard hitting, meaning it comes in really fast and then you have to just like, it's almost like a continuous adjustment every few months uh, when it comes to winter because of how fast things change. And as much as I kind of love that about Iceland, that there's a lot of variety, if you want to call it, <laughs> there are also just mental adjustments needed here in order to deal with the winter. I hope you found that useful. And if you are planning to visit Iceland, I also hope that you will use some of this advice to make sure that you can have a great time and enjoy the sights 
if the weather permits it because like I mentioned it's not worth it to try and go and do something if roads are closed or if there's a dangerous storm on its way. If you did enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up as well as share it with someone if you think it would be helpful for them to hear some truths about winter in Iceland. And remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And if you are interested in hearing interviews with Icelandic people and expats, as well as more about Icelandic history, culture, and nature, I have a podcast called All Things Iceland, which is available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all of those tools and platforms that play podcasts. So have a listen to that. There's over 50 episodes on there around various topics regarding Iceland. I also am very active on Instagram face and Facebook, is of course on here. <laughs> so feel free to follow me on those other social media platforms, which I do different content there. So you get a variety of things to see about Iceland. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.